river Danube is a colossus, the Amazon of Europe. It has its own seasons and moods. Floods and frosts, summer heat and autumn bounty shape the lives of the many animals that call it home. For some, the Danube is a natural year-round sanctuary. Others spend time on the river only to rear their young. Humans have lived along this unpredictable river for millennia. In that time, they've altered the riverbanks, built towns, and created a made-to-measure Danube. The current is forced into a straitjacket of concrete banks to prevent flooding. The natural riverscape has been transformed into a technological waterway. But the Danube remains a very special river. Crossing half Europe, 3,000 kilometers from the Black Forest to the Black Sea. Its tributaries drain a great part of the continent. On the long journey past wind-whipped plains and snow-capped peaks, the Danube encounters the extremes of weather. And its proximity to the Alps makes it both unpredictable and dangerous. When a large Atlantic low pressure front roars in from the northwest, great banks of clouds are forced up against the mountainsides. Unable to cross the mountains, they dump their entire load of water in a matter of hours. Wild water rages down the mountainsides and roars into the valleys. Suddenly, every river is in flood. Unimaginable amounts of water rush into the Danube, and the river level rises dramatically. River banks are ripped away, trees torn down. The river grasps at everything in its path. Then it invades the human settlements on this great river. Within a few hours, the Danube can do terrible damage. The worst flood disaster of the 20th century occurred in 1954. On the 6th of July that year, a low pressure front from the North Sea reached the Bavarian and Austrian Alps. It was combined with especially heavy rainfall. The result was terrible floods. The fire brigade worked round the clock. People were rescued from their homes and evacuated along with their pets and their farm animals. But there is another way to live with the floods.
Hidden in the riverine forests of the Sava in Croatia is the Lonsko Polja Nature Park. The villages here lie in the floodplain of one of the Danube's greatest tributaries. The water level can rise by up to 10 meters overnight. But here, they don't fight against the river. They've learned to live in harmony with it. The settlements consist of picturesque wooden houses. The wood to build them comes from the surrounding oak forests. If necessary, these centuries-old houses can be dismantled and rebuilt in a different place. They don't fight the river here. Over generations, they have learned to adapt. In spring, the villages of Chigoc are woken by the clatter of storks that nest on the roofs of every house. The villagers couldn't imagine life without their summer visitors. The flooded woods and pastures provide the food for the storks and their young. When the river rises, the woods and natural marshland give the river room to expand. The mass of flood water spreads out and settles, its force broken. Here, the water brings not destruction, but life. Perfect conditions, even for farm animals. Turopolia pigs love to swim and wade in the flooded areas in search of food or to wallow in the warm mud. These pigs live as free as wild animals. The floods don't worry them at all. It's late spring and the water level is still high. Much of this land has been underwater for weeks. Ideal conditions for carp to mate. In dry years, wild flowers grow here. In flood years, these are spawning grounds. In their courtship display, they rub their bodies together in an orgiastic frenzy until the females lay their eggs. The adults waste no time. They must finish mating before the waters retreat. In a few days' time, millions of young fish will hatch. The moment has also come for the tadpole shrimps. They may have lain dormant as eggs for years. As soon as the flood waters reach them, the animals hatch. After a few weeks, they will become adults and mate and their eggs, in turn, will wait here for the next big floods. Living here, you have to cope with constant change. These carp failed to leave the pasture land in time. Now they're cut off from the river, left high and dry. But the wild pigs are more adaptable. They cope just as well in the water as on land. When a high pressure front returns to Central Europe, the Sava slowly returns to its more gentle ways. Just as in the flooded areas on the Sava, storks also live along the river Morava.
This river boasts Europe's largest stork colony that still nests in trees. Once, most storks built their nests in trees, but gradually the forests were cut down. The storks make the most of the retreating waters. These damp pasturelands are ideal hunting grounds, especially in the breeding season. The storks find soft, dead grass in the fields and take it back to their offspring. But not as food. They use it to upholster their nests. Storks return to the same spot every year, and they never finish building their nest, so it can be meters high and weigh as much as two tons. At the beginning of each breeding season, the nest is improved and extended. The marsh forests have been home to this colony for more than a century, but the tall, strong oaks are becoming rarer. Without these trees, will future generations of storks be able to raise their young here? The breeding season is in full swing all along the Danube. Spoonbills, little egrets and cormorants breed in mixed colonies. Everywhere, hungry mouths must be filled. Breeding together brings security. Plenty of watchful eyes mean that potential nest robbers have no chance. And tucked away in the reed beds, the young are well protected. These pelicans are breeding in Europe's best known bird paradise. The Danube Delta. Europe's biggest wetland and a vast labyrinth of floating islands, lakes, and forests. Year after year, the pelicans come here to raise their young. These are some of the biggest colonies outside Africa. The pelicans operate a kind of kindergarten. This group of youngsters are looked after by several adults. When the adult birds go fishing, a few older ones always stay behind to protect the young.
Pelicans usually hunt in groups several dozen strong. The waters of the delta are rich fishing grounds. The pelicans herd the fish together until they can gulp them down easily. Their throat pouch can hold 13 liters of water. Pelicans close their gullets so that only the fish and none of the water gets swallowed. In especially rich hunting grounds, groups of birds gather to coordinate the hunt. Then they fly back to the nests to feed the young. The parents always find their own young, even in the confusion of the kindergarten. They regurgitate the fish into their pouch where the hungry offspring can reach it. the oppressive heat and humidity can lead to sudden, massive storms. The downpour can be torrential. An inconvenience for the pelicans, but the delta is so vast that the water level hardly rises. But wild weather like this scatters the fish. After the storm, above the surface, nothing seems to have changed. But the fishing is more difficult for the pelicans. They need to catch over two kilos of fish each day for themselves and their young. But it's not so easy to round them up. So the pelicans change their tactics. They leave the inland parts of the delta and fly to the coast. Taking off from the water is hard work for such large birds. But once airborne, they use the thermals. Just a few wing beats and they can glide effortlessly over long distances to reach the fishing ground. More and more of them gather on the sandbanks of the delta and start fishing in the shallow waters of the Black Sea. The pelicans constantly paddle to frighten the fish into dense shoals. The young have grown, and now they're learning about the water. They have little time left. At the beginning of August, they must leave with their parents on the long journey to Africa.
The early morning mists drifting over the river announce the end of summer. In the woods along the Danube, the rutting season is here. The stags are aroused and aggressive. There will be no rest for the females in the coming weeks. By the fall, the flooded areas of Lonsko Polje have dried out. The tropical lushness of summer is a distant memory. Now the farmers have to supply extra food, for the pigs need to put on a thick layer of fat to get through the winter. The first icy winds from Siberia bring the cranes to the Danube. About a hundred thousand of them fly into the Pusta. Here they make the most of the last days of autumn. They spent the summer in the Arctic, and now they're on their way with their young to spend the winter in Africa. Here, where the Danube crosses the Hungarian plains, they'll stop for a few weeks to rest and replenish their energy supplies. They still find plenty to eat in the grass plains and fields of the Pusta, even after the harvest. Every evening they leave the dry fields and fly back to the security of the water. The Hungarian plains are a mosaic of fertile wetlands fed by the Danube and its network of tributaries. The Pusta's shallow salt pools provide protection for the cranes against predators. The days grow shorter, the nights grow colder. For the cranes, it will soon be time to move on. One morning, 
the excitement is palpable. The time has arrived. As of a single mind, they set off to the south. They have a long and dangerous journey in front of them. Not all of them will come back next spring to rest here once again before heading up to the Arctic. With the departure of the cranes, the pusta is left silent and empty. For the Danube crested newt, it's time to leave the shallow pools too. But his journey is a little less epic. He's looking for a crack in the mud. And as soon as he finds the right one, he'll creep inside for the winter. Another wave of migratory birds arrives on the Danube. Thousands of geese gather midstream. Like the cranes, they've come from the Arctic. But they will spend the winter here. Belgrade. A few months ago, high waters at the confluence of the Sava and the Danube flooded this city. Now it's in the grip of winter, but the bitter cold doesn't deter the birds. Flock after flock of migratory birds arrive at the center of the city. Every evening, masses of pygmy cormorants fly upriver from their feeding grounds to the safety of the city center, where they can rest in the tall trees. It's not yet midwinter, but the temperatures have been dropping further and further below freezing. When a ridge of high pressure spreads out from the Russian tundra, the temperature can fall below minus 20 for weeks on end.
The icy blasts of wind are channeled along the river, and the cold is intensified. The Danube begins to freeze. Ice accumulates in the water. Until the river is covered in frozen armor plating. Along its entire length, through Romania, Bulgaria, and Serbia, the Danube is encased in ice. This is the coldest winter for 40 years. Even the Black Sea freezes solid. For weeks, not a single ship or barge moves. The winter is pitiless. It even forces a timid wildcat onto the open ice. The corpse of a doe cannot be ignored when food is in such short supply. Swirling frozen fog smooths and sculpts the meter-thick ice. The ravines of the Iron Gate, too, are rigid with ice. Trapped ships and barges must be freed by icebreakers before they're crushed by the pressure. Even in Vienna, the Danube has frozen solid. When snow and ice take control, the river and forests have a completely different personality. Summer's abundance gives way to a bitter struggle for survival. Despite the cold, a family of otters manage to find fish. But for the herons, fishing is now almost impossible. A heron cautiously approaches. Desperate hunger drives the bird to risk challenging the otter over a scrap of fish. But there will be no food this time. Beneath the ice, life is in slow motion. Even the catfish, themselves greedy predators, gather in groups almost motionless. The cold chills their muscles and brains, making them lethargic. Winter has passed its peak. Every day the sun is stronger, and its power is felt all along the river.
As soon as the ice breaks, everything happens very fast. In just a few hours, the Danube is free of its icy armor. Masses of water from the snow melt swell the current so that the river bursts its banks. Once again, the riverine forest is submerged. The time of stillness is over. Noise returns to the river. This is the signal for moor frogs to gather in their thousands at their spawning grounds. For a few days, the males turn bright blue, and the more males there are, the bluer they become. The arrival of a female provokes an instant reaction. If a male grabs a female, he's not going to let go. There's no chivalry among frogs. If too many males fight over a single female, she may be held under the water for so long that she drowns. It's the ultimate sacrifice. It's the imperative to reproduce, to pass on one's genes that brings about this macabre spectacle. Even if the female dies, her eggs will have been laid and fertilized. These blue frogs will literally stop at nothing. They'll pounce on anything that moves, even toads. The toads make their getaway, fast. The female takes the smaller male on her back but they're still not safe from over-enthusiastic suitors. Now, at last, herons can pick and choose from the great bounty. It's as simple as stabbing the water. With the spring, new life returns all along the Danube. The birds are back in their hundreds of thousands to raise a new generation in this watery jungle. The floating carpets of water lilies are the perfect place for terns to raise their brood. They mate here and their young are born on the lily pads. From the very first day of their lives, 
Their existence is inextricably linked to the waters of the Danube. For generation after generation, the delta has provided rich hunting grounds. And with good fortune, next spring, these chicks will be bringing food for their own young. On its long journey to the delta, the Danube passes through and creates many remarkable landscapes. And with the procession of the seasons, it changes mood time and time again. From violent flood to generous summer bounty, from deathly winter cold back to flood. Over many centuries, the river has shaped nature and civilization on this continent. Hopefully in future, it will remain what it always has been, the giant watercourse that flows through Europe, connecting different worlds.